Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, Mr. Zuckerberg and Mr. Dorsey, thank you both for being here with us today virtually uh, and for your commitment to constantly improving the way your platforms are serving people across the country. There has been a lot of talk today. Uh, many of us have been listening from our offices or online um, about the censorship of ideas and news on your platforms. And these are the things that have been at the forefront of Americans' minds in the lead up to the election, as well as the week since our 2020 general election. And, you know, the people that that I hear from, of course, believe that conservatives were wrongfully being silenced while those on the left that were given basically free reign of your platforms. And one of the points of contention that is often brought up is that you do recruit heavily from California, which leads to your employee base skewing quite heavily to the left. Um, so my first question is for both of you. Uh, do you have concerns about your ability to monitor disinformation on both sides of the political aisle equally, given that the majority of your employees typically do lean towards the more progressive side? And again, uh, to both of you, have you taken any steps then at all to make your employee base more representative of the country as a whole when it comes to political affiliation. And Mr. Zuckerberg, if we could start with you, please. Thank, Thank you, Senator. Sir. I think that this is a, those are both really important topics. Um, in terms of assessing what is misinformation, I think it's uh, important that we don't become the deciders on everything that is true or false ourselves, which is why we've tried to build a, a program of independent fact checkers that we can work with on this. Um, and those fact checkers are accredited not by us, but by the, the Independent Pointer Institute for, for Journalism as, as part of the International uh, Fact Checking Network. And it uh, includes fact checkers that I, I think span the political spectrum as well as um, I think the majority of them who, who um, would call themselves apolitical. So, We've tried to address the, the issue of, um, of making sure that there isn't a bias um, in our actions by actually having us not be the deciders on that type of content um, ourselves. And to your second question about taking steps to diversify the, the employee base, um, we, 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 this is a, a sensitive area in that I don't think it would be appropriate for us to ask people on the way in um, as they were interviewing, what their political affiliation is, which of course makes it hard to know um, what the actual uh, breakdown of the, the company is on this. But one of the areas where I'm more optimistic over time is I think we're going to see more people working remotely around the country and, and also around the world, which will mean that fewer people in smaller percent of our employees will have to come to um, you know, the, the cities and, and areas like the Bay Area where our headquarters is um, and we'll be able to employ an increasing number of people across um, all the different geographies in the country. Mm -hmm. Very good, thank you. And Mr. Dorsey? First and for foremost, the most important thing is that we, we built systems and frameworks independent of any one particular employee or individual at our company. And inclusive in, included in that system are checkpoints checkpoints to make sure that we are removing any bias that we find, checkpoints to uh, do QA and monitoring of all the decisions that we make, having an appeals process, which is an external checkpoint on whether we made the correct uh, enforcement action or not. Um, so we wanna build something that's independent of the people that we hire, and that is our focus, building a system. Second, <clears throat> like Mark, um, I'm really excited that we are at a stage where we can decentralize our company even more, um, that we do not need people to move to San Francisco, that we can hire people all over the country. They can stay where they wanna be, where they, wherever they feel most creative. And that's not just in this country, it's around the world. And I think the tools are in a state where we can do that more easily. We've obviously been forced to do it uh, with COVID um, and I don't think it's a, a state that we will 
um, return from with the, the days of having one centralized massive corporate headquarter in any one particular city are certainly over for us at least and I think many other entrepreneurs starting companies today. Yeah, very good. I really appreciate that and, and I think that COVID has taught us all a very important lesson and for those to be able to work remotely, I think you will find greater diversity in thought, which is very important, I think, for the types of platforms that you both represent. Um, now, I'd like to move on to an entirely different topic. Um, and since I began my career here in the Senate, I have been committed to, of course, protecting those who need it most. And, and folks, our, our children are the most in need. And it's our job as lawmakers to respond to the ongoing threats against them. And social media has created a whole new world for, for all of us. And it can help us share that information and resources with the public about human trafficking. Uh, and child exploitation, and it can also help us keep track of sexual predators and ensure our children are safe from those known threats. And in fact, I've been working on legislation that would help update what information sexual predators have to provide about their online identities. And as we all know, however, uh, social media can also be incredibly harmful. Uh, child sexual abuse material, CSAM, is present on nearly every single social media platform that exists. And in such polarized times, I am grateful that it is this subject that we do find. It doesn't matter if you're on the left or the right, we can come together to find solutions uh, for this issue. And Mr. Zuckerberg, I know that you and I touched upon this briefly last week when we spoke over the phone. And I do hope, Mr. Dorsey, that you also share Mr. Zuckerberg's commitment to fighting these types of issues on your platforms. Um, so just very briefly here, um, as I'm running out of time, but Mr. Zuckerberg, I do understand that Facebook is planning to outfit, uh, outfit Facebook Messenger with end-to-end -end encryption. Uh, and how do you hope to prevent the dissemination of child sexual abuse material if neither law enforcement nor you can access that messenger data? Is there some sort of apparatus that you will have in, in place that can help law enforcement with those situations? And then um, Mr. Dorsey will go to you next as well. Senator, Senator uh, thank you for this. I think you're, you're right on, uh, on every count in what you just said, both that uh, child sexual exploitation is, is one of the gravest threats that uh, we focus the most on. Um, and it is also an area that will face new challenges as we move to end-to-end um, -end encryption across our, our messaging systems. Um, uh, of course, the reason why we're moving to encryption um, is because people want greater privacy and security um, in, in their messaging systems and um, over time are choosing systems that can provide them more privacy and security. And uh, that's something that, that I think it, it makes sense for us to offer. I think encryption broadly is good, but it is going to mean that we're going to need to find and, and develop some new tactics. Um, a lot of what we have found around the, the best ways to identify bad actors on our system is not actually by looking at the specific content itself, uh, but by looking at patterns of activity and where is it that a group or a person is not behaving in the way that a normal person would, um, so you can flag and review that. Um, and we've grown increasingly sophisticated at that. Um, that, that goes across the uh, foreign interference prevention work that we do, um, and it also um, will be a factor here. And I'd be happy to follow up in more detail on what we have planned but uh, overall, I would say that this is something that we are very focused on, and I, I, I agree with your concern. Okay, thank you very much. And, and Mr. Dorsey, you as well. Um, so those that are on Twitter, making sure that uh, law enforcement would have access, if at all possible. Um, you know, if you could give me an overview of that, please. And child exploitation is absolutely terrible, and we don't tolerate it on our service at all. Um, we reg regularly work with law enforcement um, to address anything that we see. Include, inclusive of the, the patterns that, that Mark has mentioned. Uh, the majority of Twitter is, is public, um, so we don't have as much activity in private channels. Um, so it's a different, uh, different approach, but um, it's still, you know, we still see the same activity and we 
it's uh, one of our highest priorities in, in terms of the severity of harm. Mm -hmm. Thank you both very much for um, being accessible to us today. I truly appreciate your input, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. And, um